Hi everyone, welcome back to Bricks and Bites. Today we're talking all about bugs. So grab your Lego. And let's go. I'm Ben. And I'm Emma. And uh, yeah, we're here today to talk to you about buggy type things. It's going to yeah. be a fun episode. We it have is. Adrian and Amy from Animals Anonymous. Well, wow, that's a lot of that's A lot of A's. Lot of A's. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be sharing uh, some of the animals that they work with. Um, and one in particular, which is a bit creepy crawly, but... Uh, yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It is. Um, we're going to be doing our five minute frenzy. I've got a build um, for you to think about habitats for your minifigures. Yeah. And uh, Emma, what have you got today? I've got an app that's a little more about computer bugs. Ooh. Computer yeah. Bugs. Mixing it up a bit at nice the end. Nice take on that. Yeah. All right. But first, it's time for our five minute frenzy. If you've got some Lego, quickly go grab some and you yes. can join in. So, our five minute frenzy is where we. Pick something out of the cup to build. We don't know what it is. It's a complete surprise to us every time. And we have just five minutes to build it. So it's always going to be a rush. So if you have your Lego, you just can Just a little bit, in. whatever you have. All right. So <laughs> should we choose? Will we see what's we in will. the All cup? All right, Ben. Do the honors. All right. Okay. Today, it's Drum five roll. minute frenzy is... <gasps> what? You're kidding. A self... No, 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 no. Oh. It's a self-portrait. What? I know. Right. Okay, so a self-portrait is uh, a picture of yourself. Of your own face. Holy moly. All right, let's get into it. Let's go. Ready? <laughs> Set. <You're like> king. <laughs> go. All right. Okay. The timer is on for a self-portrait. All right. Well, we, do you build your actual face or do you go for a mosaic? This is the first question. Or does it have to be like lifelike? Can it just be like a Can representation just, of... This is kind of like me. Is you just gonna, uh, just Sorry, we're down here. <laughs> <laughs> Can mini- this be me? And uh, clearly this is me because it's got a moustache. Um, ben, ben definitely has <laughs> a moustache. <laughs> At least mine has brown hair. Alright, hey, we've only got like 4 minutes 30 left oh now. I've just been talking. So let's get into this um, self-portrait. Okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> Alright. You know what we should do? We should flip it and I should build you and you can build oh, no, me. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> that's just a bad idea. Okay, alright. I'm gonna... Right. Self-portrait. Okay. I could use this. I was playing with the Lego before and built oh, yeah, kind of like a head. I've got a nose. <laughs> it might be cheating. I'm going to get an eye for this. Oh, okay, this bad. is oh, tricky. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, I'm going to try and follow along with this, see if it'll work. Um, who gave us this prompt, <laughs> guys? This is so fortunate. tricky. Alright, um, alright. The other tricky thing is we don't have very good colours, which I always mention. Oh, just but it really throws me Especially every for time. something like this where you want to make it. Yeah. Sort of, uh, for my picture. Or... Okay, okay. I don't think Ben's built anything yet, guys. No, I'll just... <laughs> it's just... Look, I've got some hair. It looks black. It's a start. Hair is definitely a start. Oh, no. A dark jumper. Just it. I am, because of the colours we've got, I'm a little bit dark. I've got a darker complexion than usual. Maybe so, Maybe we can go back to the one where we're talking about feelings and just do, like, just how, do, you, how do you feel today? I Yeah. Oh, I don't think, I think it, like, do you think it's like, it's hard to do any more than just a bit. That's fair. I don't think we do. Alright, I need to make all my Lego line up. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, I'm just dropping past. That's the same thing. Oh no. Uh, I need all the pieces. 
that shook you off. Very impressed. Whoever gave it to us. Impressed. Yeah. Not annoyed. annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should be annoyed, but no, impressed. They came up with a good one. A good abstract one again. Kind of like the feeling. I don't even know if I'm going to get it. I know. Well, we've got a minute 40 left. We got Not enough. <laughs> We've got one minute. Okay, one minute. One more minute. Um, okay. I need a way of making hair. <laughs> I need hair. So unstable. I'm so lost. Oh no, oh no. Alright, under 30 seconds no, left. No, 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 no. Mine's no. only got one side of hair. Mine has. <laughs> okay. This is. Alright. Let's put a point together. Have a try? Uh, 10 seconds. Oh, no. Can you build a body in 10 seconds? No, no, no I'm trying tried. to be so gentle because mine's going to fall apart. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, time's up. Oh, dear. Actually, mine is literally a head on a stick. All right, let's go to, let's go to Ben because... Yeah, because uh, mine's still falling apart. <sighs> okay, I'm going to move off to the side a bit so you can see it. All right, are you ready for uh, Ben's, Ben's head on a stick? <laughs> <laughs> you know Look, what? It's got Not eyes, bad. it's got ears. It's got a really you used the snot pieces. It's got a really big, f like forehead. I feel, and I couldn't find like the right parts of the back of the hair. <laughs> Actually, I probably if I found maybe black for the back of the head, that may have been. Could have gotten there, maybe. So there we go. Ben's yeah. head on a on a nice. stick. That's a. I don't know if it's nice or creepy. Well, this is mine, which doesn't look like anything, but I, it's oh. a face. So oh this yes, is yes, the yes. Chin. I see. Here's Lips and eyes, and this is meant to be the hair coming down. Are the, are the blue and things the eyes? Yeah. And you got pink cheeks. Yeah, and you got like a nose. Oh, here. I see. And like the hair coming out. Hey, look at that. All right. That okay. was very tricky. Self portrait. Well, here's my self portrait. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not happy with this. <laughs> Please tell us how you would have done this. Wait, show us the back of yours, ever. Like, show no. Us the back. <laughs> It's a mess. Oh dear. Oh okay. No. Yes. Please do let us know. Uh, don't put it in our Facebook group, Bricks and Bites, mm -hmm. and let us know how you went with your self-portrait. Yeah. That was a really <laughs> tough challenge. That was like the hardest I think we've had I know. on Five Minute Frenzies. Holy moly. Yeah. Anyway, what? we'll move right along. <laughs> So now we're going to talk to Adrian and Amy from Animals Anonymous, and they're going to show us some really cool little dudes that they have yeah. over there. So go straight to you guys. Hey everybody at Bricks and Bites, I'm Adrian. And I'm Amy, and these squirmy little cuties are baby squirrel gliders. And we're from Animals Anonymous, and we do educational shows all across South Australia. If you want to learn more about what we do and who we are, check out this video from our YouTube channel. Hey guys, we're just looking for huntsman spiders here in the bark. Let me know if you see one. Hey guys, this is FT and she is a golden huntsman. Okay. So golden huntsman spiders are from the tropics. They're in far north Queensland. Now golden huntsmen are the biggest huntsmen that we have here in Australia, and they grow about 17 centimetres in diameter. So from this leg to the tip of this leg, they can grow about 17 centimetres. Currently, she's about 15. Now, the Golden Huntsman is only one of over 1,200 species of Huntsman spiders. They're all quite flat spiders, some flatter than others, 
and they often like to live under the bark of trees. They also get in people's houses and you can find them behind picture frames. And they're not too bad to have around the home because they can eat cockroaches, mosquitoes and other creepy crawlies. Now, these guys produce silk from their back end, like all spiders do, but actually only half of the wild spiders make a web. So some people call this web, but it's not, it's just silk. Some spiders use that silk to make a big web, which they use to catch their prey, but huntsmen don't. Huntsmen actually hunt their prey. So when these guys hunt, they can run after their prey, launch and grab their prey and inject a little bit of venom from their fangs to immobilize their prey and they can wrap it up with their silk. Now they do have a mild venom. If she was to bite me, it would hurt. They can break the skin, a little bit of blood can come out. There are reports of people feeling a bit nauseous, maybe headaches and some localized swelling from a huntsman bite. We can tell this huntsman's a girl because of her palps. Now spiders either side of the fangs have these little finger-like things. So they've got their eight legs, of course, and these little extra little appendages called palps. And on her, they look a bit like fingers, okay? And that's how we can tell she's a girl. Because with boys, they've got little balls on the end of their palps. So boys have like boxing gloves on the end of their palps, and that helps them in reproduction. So these guys eat things like moths, caterpillars, they can take frogs, and small lizards, and even small mammals. So if you find one of these guys in your home, just know that they are good to have around. You may not want it living in your home, so if you get a cup or a little container, you can get the animal into the cup or the container and take it outside. They are pretty fast and unpredictable. They, they have these large legs so they can run very fast and that does freak out a lot of people, but the chances of them biting you are very, very slim. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're interested, feel free to subscribe, comment any questions that you might have about this little guy, or even if there's any other animals that you'd like us to cover. Thanks so much, Amy and Adrian. That oh was really cool. Goodness, do you imagine having that thing on your face? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to imagine it. So no, kids, uh, just hot tip. If you're at home and you see Huntsman on the wall... Don't put it on your don't. face. <laughs> Please do not put it on your face. Don't say that uh, Ben and Emma showed you how to put a hunt on your face. No, not at all. Observe it from afar and then catch it in a glass and put it outside. Get yeah. mum or dad to do that. Yeah. They are very good for catching the bugs. <laughs> Speaking of spiders. Yes. We have some great spider books in the library if you want to check them out. So nice. in the kids' non-fiction area, something like this, Inside the Spider's Web has Ooh. heaps of information about spiders in there that you might be interested in. So come check that out. Mm. Something about spiders' webs. If you're into spiders, you want to know more? Yeah. But pro tip for libraries, if you really like animals and bugs, um, there are really good books in the adult non-fiction section. So mm. make sure you check out the adult non-fiction section as well so you can find books like this. Um, so you can pop these on hold uh, on our website. Uh, this one is really nice. Spiders of the world. You can check out all different spiders from all over the place. Gross. Really, really cool. <laughs> Did you just say gross? gross. <laughs> but there's really, it's, it's cool, cool gross? I don't know. Cool gross, definitely cool gross. Cool gross. So make sure, yeah, if you go to the uh, onecard.network slash Marion, that will let you put um, books on hold from the Marion Libraries or actually from any library in uh, South Australia, any public library. So, yeah, if we don't have it, Hundreds we can get it in for you. Hundreds and thousands of books yeah. for you. Yeah. So many. <laughs> yep, you don't even have to buy your own books. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can get books from the library. All right, well, up next we'll be uh, looking at these fun things that are on the table. Up next we have our, uh, our Minifig Habitat Lego Creator Challenge. So what I want to do today is, uh, with, you know, they showed us the habitat for the huntsman. You saw Adrian looking in the trees with the bark. Um, if you've ever thought about, you know, what can we do with our minifigs, you know that there's actually a way that you can create little habitats. And the fun thing about these habitats is if you design them the right way, they can actually stack up and you can make one giant scene with these. So I'm going to switch cameras and uh, we're just going to have a look at that now. Okay, so Le Lego minifig habitat time. All right, let me show you this one from Kat that she sent this one in for us. Um, you can see here, it's a nice little display for your minifigs. Lovely way to display. 
And so you can use your minifig as a bit of inspiration of what you want to build. So you can see you've got like a samurai warrior um, with the blossom tree in, in the background. Looks a bit like Mulan. Mm. Uh, so this is a nice little design and you could design anything. So sometimes you might not have space to build like a whole house for your minifigs or you might just want, you might just have one or two minifigs that you want to build for. These little Lego habitats are a really fun way to do it. Now, there are a few things that are really important about this. One is that it's on an eight by eight base plate. So eight by eight. And you can see here on the sides that there's a little bit of overlap. So on this part here, it jump, juts out, goes up four bricks, comes back in and goes up four bricks again. On the opposite side, it stays nice and flush with the base plate. Okay, it goes up four bricks, comes out and goes four bricks up. And then on top, there's a series of studs and uh, plates here. And the idea behind this is that if you have lots of these minifig uh, little habitats and they're designed the same way and they all have these same little notches and, and uh, studs, you can connect them all up together. So I'm going to show you how to do that in right now. So I've got a couple that, uh, that we made on the weekend. So here's one of a couple taking a photo by the sunset. So you can see that they've used um, the back here. These bricks are your sunset with those sunset colors. You can see here, I'm gonna connect that up. So they connect at a bit of an angle, just like that. And we get another one here. Here's one of a street artist. She's got those cool cans there, spray cans. She's, she's painting the walls. Okay, we can connect that one. Now, we have another one, we've got a, the strong man with his tent. And you can see that this can now connect on top as well. So if you have a whole bunch more, you can connect more and more and you can do them back to back if you wanted to. Uh, but the more you connect, the more you can display. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now, really quickly. So again, we've got our eight by eight base plate. We're gonna start with that. All right. Now, the idea is that you need to build out, uh, so you wanna go nine, so you wanna go off the edge this way, and you want to stay flush this way. So you need to use a series of bricks. So I've just stacked a whole bunch together. Now a few points, you're going out nine in one direction and eight in another direction. That means you might need to find some one by one bricks or one by three bricks to help you make that uh, work. Then we have, again, we have that other row. So remember this four bricks tall, and we're going nine in this direction and eight in that direction. So that gives us our template. And across the top, we've got studs here, and we've got two here. Again, that will just give us something to connect to. All right, so again, we can bring that over. And we can add that to our collection. There we go. So you can imagine a whole bunch of these being put together. Now, again, you can be quite creative with this. You might feel like it's only eight by eight, but you can do quite a lot. So here's an example where I've done one where they're not standing on the on the bottom, but my minifig is, uh, he's swimming in the ocean. So I've got an ocean floor, use some transparent blue parts to make water. For the background, we've got a tree. So we've used bricks to make a tree and we've popped him inside the water to swim. So I'll show you how I did that. See there, I've just left two brick, uh, sort of two studs wide. And that's a gap just enough to fit his legs and his arms will hold him in place. And look, his feet aren't touching the water, uh, aren't touching the ground, so it looks like he's swimming. I could adjust his feet so it looks like he's paddling a bit. There you go, you can be quite creative with these. I've set these up the wrong way. This should actually be Oh no! Alright, so I've attached these incorrectly. It should be attached like that. So then they're uh, sort of offset. There you go. It's like building a pyramid. Yeah, so then they all stack up around. Anyway, there we go. Nice. Well done, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I'm going to jump in with my app for this week. So this week we're looking at an app called Tribit Logic. And so it's using computer binary, computer code 
to get rid of some bugs. Oh, very cool. I mean, computer yeah. bugs are the mm. worst. You don't want bugs. Yeah, you don't want bugs bug. in your computer. Yeah. <laughs> Even less than you want mosquitoes or real bugs or <laughs> spiders anywhere else. So we'll jump straight in and I'll talk you through how to do it. So here we go. I'm going to go back to level one just to start you off. And it's going to explain it along with me. So basically, this is our little robot and he wants us to get rid of these bugs. But we have to use binary code, There's, which has a one or a zero. So this is one of our little dudes that we use to get rid of bugs. And he changes everything to a one if there's a one there. So if it's a zero or a one, it's going to be a one. And if it's all ones, it gets rid of the bug. If it's all zeros, it gets rid of the bug too. So we just want it to be all of one or the other. So we're going to have another shot. So we're going to combine these two, which will turn the first, third and fourth column into ones. And then if we put that on top of this one, there we go. So next, I'm gonna show you a different person and this is the not button. So all of these are the equivalent to actual binary. So the not reverses it. So all the zeros become ones and all the ones become zeros. So we're gonna put him on top of our or to switch all of that so that now all the ones that our or have can go onto our bug and connect and there we go. He's got all ones and he will be defeated and we'll get rid of these bugs. So that's a couple of them. There's a few others as well, but we're gonna keep going through. So if we turn this guy around to so use the not button to make his different and then the or again and all ones. So those are those two. They're the first two simple ones. The next one we've got, I think is the and button. So I've skipped a bit ahead so the AND button is the opposite to our OR button. He turns all the ones to zeros. So his zeros here will now turn all of them into zeros. So if there's a one and a zero, it's going to be a zero. Whereas for OR, if it's a one and a zero, it's going to be a one. So this is language that is actually used in computer coding. It's a bit different. You're not defeating bugs quite in the same way, but it works similarly. So you can see there where there's two ones, it's state a one because there's no zero. Here we go, we'll turn it into a zero and then our bug will be defeated. Perfect. So the last one I have to show you is all the way up at level 32. So you work through slowly, but this guy's a little bit confusing. He's X4. So he turns zeros and ones into ones, but if they're matching, he turns them into a zero. So if your two numbers match, it's a zero. If they're different, it's a one. So one is generally in computer code, it's an on whereas the zero is an off. So let's have a turn with this guy. So you can see if we put him on top of the bug, they're all going to be matching, which means they will all become zeros, which means our bug is defeated because he's all off. And we'll do another one just to make sure we really get it because this one confused me. But this is where it talks to you about how it's using logical operations, which is actually used in computers. So. This time we're going to put this one on here, which means that the ones that have zero and one on the ends are going to be ones and the matching ones are going to be zeros. And so then when we put this guy on top, they're all going to turn into zeros and we'll defeat our bug. So that's the main way to play this game is to move up through those levels. There's heaps and heaps of them. But the other way that I want to show you guys is defense mode. So if we click that at the top, this is like a time trial version. That's a lot trickier and you've got to play through the other bit first to fully understand, but it's heaps of fun. So basically all the bugs just appear on the screen and you've got to grab from down the bottom to make them disappear. And you've got to think really fast. So if I'm looking at this guy, will my and help? I'm not sure that it will. Nope. So I've got to find something else. My or. Yes. Perfect. Let's. And so you, you got to keep looking and keep figuring out which binary can actually work to get rid of the bugs. That looks like a very cool app. It is very cool. I had a lot of fun playing with it and I feel like I learned a little bit. So <laughs> that's always good. We like learning. We love <laughs> learning. Well, thanks again for, uh, for joining us. We do hope you enjoyed it and we hope you learned something new and we'll see you next week for Bricks and Bites. See ya. See ya.